Rob, how are you? I'm very, very well. I'm very, very pleased uh, for two reasons. One, that I got my new Thrive Programme T-shirt. Very nice. On. Thank you, love. Like but you. also, that the sun's finally out. Summer's here, <laughs> and it, the kids are just about to go back to school. <laughs> no, shame, Fantastic. isn't it? Shame. Perfect. Perfect. All right. but, yeah, all good for me, thank you. Good. What's our topic for today? So we've had lots of good feedback from the podcast last time on our top five tips okay. for parents. Um but actually, some of them want to go a little bit further and want to know what to do when their child is having a panic attack um, due to emetophobia. Okay. So when they are panicking, when they're in the throes of that scary, scary time and they can't do anything, what can the parents do to support them in that moment? So, Do you know, that's such a... I, I always say, you know, the, the, oh, that's such a good question. You know, if we hadn't started these podcasts, we'd have never thought about these answering yeah. these questions. And if you think about that one, other than the obvious answer of get your child through the Thrive Programme and get them over it, yes, that's probably the most pertinent question that you'd ever have as a parent of a child with emetophobia. Yes. What do I do? And, and the worst time is when they're having a panic attack, the parent feels powerless, what do I do? Mm -hmm. That's the most important question ever. So brilliant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Oh, I suppose the first thing would be to just define, really, and explain in Thrive parlance what what a what a panic attack is. Yeah. So if we think that a person's ability to thrive and ability to cope with things is basically a skill set, mm -hmm. okay, that's how how good they believe they are and how skillful they are about dealing with a situation. And I've talked about this before about, for example. Every pilot around the world that flies any sort of airplane, civilian or military, has to go solo after six or ten hours. Mm -hmm. And no matter how much training they've had, it's always frightening. Yes. Okay, You can't train someone to the point where it's not frightening, because sooner or later, that that instructor, like you and I sitting tandem together now, is going to say, right, Rob, I'm going to get out of the plane. I want you to go and fly off by yourself. And you think, crap, yep. what if I get it wrong? What if I crash? What if I kill everybody? Yes. Okay, so it's mm -hmm. always frightening. You can't avoid being frightened. No amount of training is going to stop you being anxious on that first solo flight. And then you do a couple of more solo flights. And by the time you've done the third or fourth, all your anxiety is gone. And it's gone because you're now confident about it because you've got a skill set. Yes. Okay. So the same thing goes for everything. Mm -hmm. People are happy and confident and positive in life and don't create anxiety or stress in situations where they feel confident and where they've got a skill set. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when someone gets to the point where they're having a full blown panic attack, they've created so much stress and anxiety for themselves. And the more they focus on something, the more they zoom in, the bigger the anxiety they're creating. Yes. And I use those words carefully, of course, because the anxiety isn't happening to them they are creating that anxiety by the way in which they're reacting mm -hmm. to whatever the perceived threat is and in this case it's the notion of being sick right and so when someone doesn't believe they'll cope and believes and has the belief that i couldn't cope with that it'd be terrifying it'd be a fate worse than death it'd be the worst thing in the world mm -hmm. obviously they've got to try and avoid it you and I would be the same. I've never had emetophobia. You have. Mm -hmm. But if we're on a boat and that boat is going to crash into an iceberg, okay, at 40 knots, you're not thinking about how am I going to cope with this? You're not thinking about how am I going to get away with this? You're thinking about how am I going to get out of here? Mm -hmm. How do I avoid this? Yes. I will not be able to cope if this boat hits the iceberg. I yes. will not be able to cope if this car hits that brick wall. I will not be able to cope if that gunman breaks into this house, okay? I have to avoid, I have no choice. I've got to avoid, I've got to escape. Yes. And that's essentially what a panic attack is. Mm -hmm. So a person has wound themselves up to the point where they cannot possibly go there. Mm -hmm. They cannot do that thing, okay? I have to escape, I have to avoid. And it's a very, very powerful feeling. Obviously, any parents out there that have seen their kids have a panic attack will know it is. They feel completely out of control mm -hmm. at that moment mm -hmm. and completely powerless and terrified. So yes. out of control, powerless, 
and terrified, mm -hmm. which is why it's very difficult to talk any sense into them at the time, yes. which is why shouting at them and telling them off only makes it significantly worse yep. because they already feel terrified and powerless and out of control. Yes. And those feelings are real. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, you know this, I know you know this. The <laughs> feelings are real. The feelings are genuine, okay? It's only the perceived threat that isn't real, yes. okay? They're not actually going to die. They will cope. Everyone copes with being sick, right? Mm -hmm. It's not that. They have built it up in their mind to the point where, where they believe that threat is real. Yeah. And therefore, their feelings are no different than if the threat was real, mm -hmm. OK, so mm -hmm. if, if masked gunmen burst into my house right now mm -hmm. and are searching through the room, skiru, screaming and firing off guns, it doesn't happen very much in Devon. Right. But imagine <laughs> that it does. OK. Yeah. And I'm sitting in this room terrified, thinking I've got to escape. I've got to escape. I've got to escape. Parents that are listening, their children's feelings and beliefs at the time they have a panic attack is no different mm -hmm. to mine sitting here now. OK, yes. they are just as real, those thoughts and feelings. Yep. The only difference is that in the ridiculous scenario I've just given you, my perceived threat is actually a real threat. Yes. And I might die, whereas theirs isn't. Mm -hmm. But the emotions they have created and generated and the beliefs they have and that flight or fight response they've created is absolutely real. OK, mm -hmm. that's the first thing to think about. So the panic attack happens because they have wound themselves up so much, they've zoomed in so much on a situation, made it bigger and bigger and bigger. They've lost all their perspective. Their mental stressometer needle is in the red. Yep. All they can see is this metaphorical iceberg looming towards them and they're having a panic attack yes. Okay, because it feels real. So the easy answer is to catch them before it becomes that far you know it doesn't just suddenly happen no one goes straight to 10 on the richter scale on the stressometer scale without going through 987 you know so yep. if you catch them early enough if you get to learn when they're starting to wind themselves up yep. it's much easier to calm them down when they're starting than if then the red but let's assume right now you've walked in and they're not going to school they're sitting in the kitchen crying their eyes out, having a panic attack what do you do okay yep. so the first thing to do is be calm. Yes. Yes. Okay. You, yep. you have to be calm. Okay. If you can't be calm, there's no point in being there. You're mm -hmm. only going to make it worse. If you really yep. can't go in the room with them and smile and give them a cuddle and be, and be calm, don't go in there. Just let yes. them stay there until they calm themselves down or send someone else in there or distract them some other means. Okay. Because, don't forget that in, in that zone at that moment, like me in here with gunmen running around the house, I am already terrified and anxious. Yes. Someone now telling me off or shouting at me or, or trying to make me go out there and face them. Mm -hmm. No Not way. Not going to help. Yeah. No, no, that's only going to make me angry at you. Yes. Now, well, you, yep. you're trying to make me go out and face these gunmen, right? You know, yep. what, what does that make me think of you? I'm mm -hmm. just going to get more stubborn, more belligerent, yep. scream louder and feel more out of control. Okay? Yes. yes. So calm yourself down, first of all. You've got to, when you talk to your child, you've got to approach your child knowing and believing and feeling that they have created all of this anxiety about a perceived threat that mm -hmm. isn't actually real. They're not actually going to die. There aren't any gunmen. There's no iceberg. There's no brick wall, okay? But, but, but they don't know that at that time. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be calm and reassuring. Yes. If you ask anybody who's got a fear of flying, who does fly, even though they've got a fear of flying, they always say, if I start to feel panicky, I immediately look at the stewardesses. Yeah. Can I still say stewardesses? And... Air crew. Oh, stewards, yeah. Stewards, thank you. Well yeah. done. Stewards, stewardesses. And if they're calm and walking around and still serving drinks and smiling, everything's okay. Yes. But of course, if they look at the stewardess and the stewardess is panicking or angry or rushing, they'll think, shit, this is real. Yes. So the first thing then that I'm waffling is to be calm. Yes. So, yeah, take a deep breath before you walk in the kitchen or wherever they are. Yeah. 
calm yourself down, big smile on your face, mm -hmm. and just be calming and yeah. safe and, and happy and, and um, reassuring. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then what you do is it's very difficult to talk someone out of a belief mm -hmm. in a few moments when they're really panicky. So don't even try to. Nope. There's no point in going in there and saying, it's not real, you're being silly. Mm -hmm. You're making it up. Mm -hmm. Don't be daft. What's wrong with that? Nobody, nobody really likes. You know, none of that's going to work at this moment. Nope. So it's quite. It's it's calming. It's reassuring. It's about physical things like getting them to slow their breathing down, mm -hmm. get them to have a glass of water. Yeah. Maybe just have a walk around the garden. Yep. You know, this thing that you worry about is not going to happen. Calm yourself down. You don't say yep. why it's not going to happen for a minute. Okay. Yep. Calm yourself down, go and have a walk around the garden, go and play with the dog for a minute, just, you know, watch a bit of telly, anything. Yeah. Just the threat isn't here. It's not going to happen now. Mm -hmm. Give yourself time to calm yourself down. Yeah. And then when you talk about the situation, and I, I, I thought about this recently, a really good metaphor for a parent would be to imagine that your child has social anxiety, okay, not which they are ultimately do as well you've got to have social anxiety to have metaphobia right yeah. but imagine their main problem is a social anxiety right mm -hmm. and the day they're panicking they're panicking not because of anything to do with being sick but because they got a presentation to do that day in school yes okay so you as the parent your child's having a panic attack imagine that they're having a panic attack because they got to stand up in english today and do a presentation in front of the whole class yeah Okay. And the reason I picked that is because it's not a real threat mm -hmm. like gunman or an iceberg is. You know, it's a situation that can be really tough, but they're not going to die. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not going to have a heart attack. They're not, it's not going to kill them. Therefore, they don't need to escape. And that if they calm themselves down a little bit, they'll realize that they can do it. Yep. Might be uncomfortable, might be embarrassing. They might feel really on the spot but they will tolerate it. Mm -hmm. You can do this. You can tolerate this. Imagine yourself, you know, giving that talk and everyone liking it and listening to it and feeling more powerful and that you will be able to tolerate it and it'll be all right. And once you've done it, you'll feel so much better. Mm -hmm. It's that kind of conversation you want to have. Yes. So the social anxiety that they're giving a, a talk at school, giving a presentation at school or university is a good one because it helps the parent remember that the, the threat isn't real. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, the most, the absolute most that can happen is that the person feels really on the spot and really quite embarrassed. Yes. Okay. Which is an unpleasant situation. But every time they put themselves in that situation, it's going to get easier. Yeah. Every time they run away from it, it's going to get harder. Yes. We build self efficacy and we build agency and we build self confidence. Mm -hmm by putting ourselves in situations that we don't like, tolerating it, mm -hmm. however uncomfortable it is, tolerating it, and it gets easier next time, just like the metaphor of, of the pilots doing their first solo, okay? Yep. Mm -hmm. or, or getting over a, a, a simpler phobia, like a phobia of spiders. Every time you go in the room where the spider is and you manage your panic and you're saying, this is okay, I can do this, it's not going to hurt me, it's not, it's not a film, it's not going to jump out and bite me, yep. it's going to be okay. It gets easier next time because, yeah. of course, you've got the memory of the fact that you did it previously. Yes. Your skill set builds. You feel more confident. You feel more relaxed. You mm -hmm. create less anxiety. Yep. So we only create then stress and anxiety and panic in situations where we don't feel powerful. And powerful uh, means one of two things or both, two, both of these two things. One is how much I can control the situation. Mm -hmm. And the second part is how, how well I can cope with it. People that have a phobia haven't got any coping skills in that area. Whatever mm -hmm. that area is, they, they haven't got coping skills. If they had coping skills, they wouldn't be creating anywhere near as much panic. Okay? Yep. It might be unpleasant and horrible. You know, so someone that's got a little bit of social anxiety might not sleep well the night before doing the presentation at school mm -hmm. and, and might be dreading it. Or, or as an adult, you know, they've got to do a speech at a wedding, might be dreading it. But actually, you know, it's going to be OK, yeah. however uncomfortable, I'll get through it and I'm going to grow from the whole experience. Okay. Yeah. 
So if they're at the point where they're panicking, it's because they haven't got coping skills. In other words, they have to avoid. Yeah. The panic is, I cannot cope with this. Yes. And the classic would be for a younger child, particularly, I can't go to school today. Yes. Yes. David said that Sarah said that Peter's got a bug and I haven't slept all night, mum. And I can't go to school today because I know that I, I just know that David's going to be sick and I'm going to catch it. Yep. Uh, or something like that. OK. Yep. And the reason they're panicking so much is because they cannot conceive of the possibility of going to school and coping yes. with that threat. Mm -hmm. the only thing they believe they can do is avoid it by not going yes okay and mm -hmm. the difficulty with that is of course is every time anyone avoids something it becomes much harder next time yes i'm often asked by parents um am i am i am i being unhelpful am i am i wrong allowing my child to to stay off school every time they they feel sick or something and i say no you blew it when you let them have the first day off, when you mm -hmm. set that precedent yeah. to let the child feel powerful enough mm -hmm. that they're allowed to make their own decision whether they're going to school or not, it's very difficult to get that back then. Yeah. So if, if a parent's listening and, and they haven't yet allowed their child a day off school, do everything to not allow that. Yes. Because you're not helping them long term by doing that. Yes. They're not building a skill set. They're not building coping skills. They're building their belief in their ability to run away from things. Yeah, and it's just it. going to get and it's just going to get harder each time. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. the difficulty that was as a parent, as a normal loving parent, is you obviously hate to see your own child in distress, or any child, but your own child particularly in distress. Mm -hmm. Yes. And all you think about at that time is. I just want to help them calm down. I hate to see them so upset and crying their eyes out. Yeah. You know, the easiest thing would be to say, look, I tell you what, you don't have to go to school today. Mm -hmm. And then they'll, they'll immediately relax and come and give you a big cuddle. And, you know, you've just made a rod for your own back and a rod for their back. Yes. So you want to resist as a parent that temptation to agree to yep. that. Yep. And even if you spend half an hour, an hour, two hours all morning calming that child down and then getting them into school yes that's a win yes it is yes even if you spend all day calming that child down mm -hmm. and getting them into school at 3 p.m just for the final half an hour yes. it's still a win yes yes okay mm -hmm. not giving power to their desire to escape their desire for control mm -hmm. is essential Yes. OK, it's not it's not good for a child. It's unhelpful and unhealthy for a child to feel or believe they've got that that amount of power. And it's yep. very difficult to train them out of it once they believe they've got it. Mm -hmm. OK, yep. so calming, reassuring. Remember, it's about it's not happening to you. Mm -hmm. It's not real. You know, it's not it's not the threat is nowhere near as big as, as you're making it as, as you're experiencing it. OK, mm -hmm. the way you've been thinking about it and brooding about it and some of these other things have made it much bigger. Look around you. Nobody else is frightened by it. Look around you. No one else. You know, if it was really that terrifying, wouldn't everyone in school be sitting, wanting to stay at home today? Mm -hmm. You know, when people's got, yes. for people who've got a fear of flying, they don't seem to think, they look at the stewards and the stewardesses, mm -hmm. but they don't look around every other person on the plane and think, well, how they're all still happy. They're no. still chatting with all this turbulence going on. You know, why, why aren't they panicking? You know, look, look at the evidence. Yep. So gently, slowly, not just at the moment the child is feeling panicky, but all the other times, every day, getting them to understand that panic and all of our emotions, in fact, anxiety, panic, don't happen to a person. Yeah. It feels like it does, especially yes. if you've got a social anxiety and you're doing a talk in front of everyone. It feels like everyone looking at you is yes. making you feel really anxious. Mm -hmm. But of course, it's not. Mm -hmm. It's the way you're thinking about everyone looking at you and, and what you perceive the implications of that to be. Mm -hmm. So teaching your child to realize that their emotions don't happen to them and that they can learn to manage them really well and they can learn to control them better. They can learn to regulate them so that they decide how they're going to react to a certain situation. Yeah. And on, on the morning where if a child is feeling panicky, 
the very best thing to do is to do something that helps them feel more powerful. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yes. that might be something as simple as go and play with their Lego for 10 minutes and make yes. something. Yes. Go and play with an Airfix model for 10 minutes. Go and, and throw some hoops at the netball in the back garden. Mm -hmm. yep. Go and go for a little run. Go for a walk. Go and uh, draw a picture. Yeah. Go and do, do something. Something they can do, yes. Yeah, go and do something that you normally do or you, you can do that makes you feel good yes. and, and a little bit more powerful because then yeah. you're in the mindset of feeling powerful. Yes. And maybe that's something for a parent with a child that's got metaphobia to do every morning. Every morning, first thing you do once they're up is do something that helps them make them feel confident or competent, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so that so they so they they they're primed to feel that they're an achiever, that they can do things, that they're yes. a problem solver. Yes, you know that would reduce their ability to create anxiety and panic significantly. Yes, it would. Okay, this yeah. is classic priming, and and continually helping them to learn to manage their emotions mm -hmm. and then keep reminding them that they're improving. Like, for example, swimming in a river or cold water swimming or, mm -hmm. or running or some rock climbing at the local rock climbing centre or yeah. archery or, or, or a martial art. Martial arts are fantastic for kids to give them confidence and body yeah. confidence and this kind of stuff. You know, anything like that or, or, or playing chess – Anything like that is going to help build a confident skill set within that child, mm -hmm. which will then roll over into their emotional control, their ability to manage their emotions. That, that, that's it. all this is about. Yes. The ability yeah. to manage their emotions, to realize mm -hmm. that emotions don't happen to you, mm -hmm. that it's the way in which you're responding to situations in life and that you can learn to manage those emotions and control those emotions much better than they're currently doing. And that's also the, the, like the single most important gift you could give any child, not just one with a metaphobia. Yes. The most important gift you give any child is the ability to manage their own emotions and realize that they're able to mitigate stressful situations. Because it's only, remember, if we think about a stressometer that goes from naught to 10, mm -hmm. And as it goes up, you think, I can, I can, I can manage this. I can, I can cope with this. I can cope with this. I can cope with this. A bit harder, I can still cope. A bit harder, I can still cope. But it's really hard work. I can't cope. I can't cope. Yeah. It's only in that last bit where they believe they can't cope. So mm -hmm. you don't actually need to reduce your child's anxiety down from 10 out of 10 to zero. Yeah. You only need to reduce it down 10%. Yeah. You only need to get them to see that although this presentation today might be really unpleasant you can do it yeah you don't you know you can tolerate the unpleasant feeling those butterflies mm -hmm. and and the fast heart but you can do that that's okay mm -hmm. and, and next time you do it it's going to be much easier because you've done it once and yep. then the next time easier still so that's a, another thing we don't have to get rid of all of that anxiety we don't have to get the child to calm down completely to zero yeah just calm down enough that they're able to have more perspective over the situation yeah. and and they feel more confident to be able to deal and manage their emotions in that situation. So anything they can do on a daily basis to, to teach their child to manage their emotions, it should be as important as teaching their child manners, as important as teaching their child how to cross the road safely, yeah. as important as all the other safety lessons you teach your child. Yes. The understanding that their emotions are not happening to them mm -hmm. and, that, and that they can learn to regulate them and, and manage them and their life is going to be so much easier and so much more, they're going to be so much more confident and so much more fulfilled if they believe they've got some kind of uh, mitigation over stressful situations by managing how they respond. That's the yes. most important thing. Absolutely. That was a very long answer to what was a simple question, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> but it was a very good answer, very detailed answer. I love it. Um, I would just like to add to a, just a couple of bits. Um, one was when you've calmed them down, when they've calmed down, um, because ultimately they will, it might take longer than you would like it to take. Um, you know, when they're refusing to go to school, quite often that means that you're going to be late for work. 
So mitigating that inside your own head as well and just accepting the fact, that, okay, I'm going to be late for work today. Send that email if you need to, send that quick text so you can get yourself in a, a nice calm state to help them. When they have calmed down, no matter how long that takes, praise them for it. So don't keep harping back to, oh gosh, now we're an hour late, now we're two hours late. It's gone. You're praising, well done, you've calmed yourself down. Brilliant, fantastic, well done. Right, okay, now let's go forward. All right, so it's gone. You don't need to Can remind. I for one second? That, that's perfect, okay? So th- they have to process what they've achieved. Otherwise, yes. they don't gain anything from it. That pilot, right. once he lands, has to sit back and really think about what he'd done all by himself yes. so that it's easy for next time. So, so you praise the child, but also you say, and they calm down, and I'm, I'm, I feel much better now. Good. How did you do that? Yes. How did you yes. calm yourself down? Well, I guess I just told myself X, Y, Z. Yes. So they've got to understand how they did it. And that's, that's part of the process then of them learning that it's them that that calmed it down and mm-hmm. it's not just that they happened to calm down after 10 minutes yes. you did that see what you yep. did you were really panicky five minutes ago and you've calmed yourself down what did you do how did you do yep. that well i just yep. did this brilliant yes. write that down put it in your diary that's yep. what you do next time you feel panicky yes 100%. that's how you build yep. that skill set sorry michelle carry on no that's absolutely fine so perfect and you can almost ask them as well well, what does it say about you've calmed yourself down how did you do it brilliant well done what does that say about you now in whenever you panic in whatever situation whether it's to do with the metaphobia or doing that presentation or something else what what have you gained what do you know about yourself now because getting them to really process that i can calm myself down and this is how i do it you're building the belief in themselves that they can calm themselves down and they have that skill set so those questions are really helpful as well in that moment I would also say going forward, you know, if if you're not going through the program yet or you're not in any treatment for it, you're sort of firefighting as this is happening. If you do calm them down and they get them to school that day, the following day, you might be preempting as a parent that it's going to be the same. Try to treat that child as they are going through their day when they've come home from school. One, process it. Again, exactly what you've done. You got through today. Brilliant. How did you do it? Praise, 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 keeping everything positive. But then treat them as if they are almost over it. Treat them as if they're not going to do it again. So, you know, when you're talking to your husband or your wife later or whoever else you're talking to and they're saying, oh, they were really panicky this morning, they are really terrified of this and, oh, gosh, I hope they're not like that tomorrow. If they're hearing all of that, that's priming them to be like that tomorrow. So you're trying to treat them as if they're nearly over it or as if they're not going to do that again. So you're talking to them as if it's not a threat, as if they're not scared of it so that they're not building that back up. So just be really careful as to what you say around them in front of other adults or in front of other children or to them themselves, that you're not building that up unintentionally by what you're saying. Would yes. be a, a advice from myself. Yes. No, really good. Um, I thought of something else a minute ago as well. I think that, you know, it, it, worldwide, but certainly as as a nation, uh, parenting has changed dramatically in the last 20 years since since I was uh, mm. first a parent and then for the 20 years before that in that now if a child if a child is unhappy about something we 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 seem to uh, find it so easy to accept that, that they run away or or that yeah. they just escape it or they don't do it i saw something on tv recently where a young lad was on gmtv or something and was talking about the fact that he found he got really anxious or it made him really anxious studying the Holocaust at school in history. Mm-hmm. And his mum was starting a campaign to stop teaching the Holocaust. Well, of course, that's not the answer, right? The yeah. answer is to teach children to cope yes. with difficult and challenging situations, not to write those situations out of the curriculum or, or you know, if, someone, if someone's got a fear of dogs, does that mean you move somewhere where they never, ever see a dog again? Yeah. And sometimes it seems like the right thing to do because you just want to help your child okay mm-hmm. but really important to realize that that you know both as a parent and for the child they're just making their life so much more difficult yes we've yes. seen recently we've been contacted by a couple of uh, parents whose youngsters have got to the point where they never leave the house now mm. and obviously the parents collaborated in that and got you know they let them not go to school once then it become twice and then they don't go to school at all and the parents said yeah. you know what? i'm gonna home ed my kids which is fine okay but what they really mean is they can't persuade the child to go to school mm-hmm. and then when the child's got all that power their anxiety gets worse yeah 
Yes. The more power they have, the more yes. anxious they get because the threat is still real. All yeah. you're doing is giving me more power to avoid that iceberg. Yep. You're not giving me more power to navigate the iceberg, to crush the yeah. iceberg, to overcome it. You give me more power to run away from it. Yeah. So if you've got to the point where you've got a child who never leaves their bedroom, doesn't go to mm-hmm. school and you have to take meals in, that, you know, not only has the child got to the point where they feel completely powerless in yeah. around managing their emotions, they feel powerful in escaping from them. Yeah. And that's a really hard, long road back from that. It's you know, doable. Really hard on your it's doable. Yeah. It's yeah, not we've got to off, but it's it's but, tricky. But, you know, you, you, it, it, that's going to require, you know, three or four months of mm. continuous daily effort yes. to get out of that, and yes. an education to get out yeah. of that situation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I suppose the next thing would be if your child is having the panic attack, you 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 quite often I'm, I'm talking about my um, experience now as a, a teacher quite often they would get to school having already had panicked at home they've calmed them down they've got them to school they start again okay so they're panicked again by the time they get to school all right so I would say in that time which is quite a common thing in the car on the way you're constantly reminding them that they are skillful that they've got it that they're powerful you're getting them to imagine their day going well You're getting them to go, well, what are you going to play at playtime? Who are you going to play with? What are you going to do? So that they are continuously, you're priming them to have a good day. All right. So try not to, um, you know, become distracted in the car so that everything goes quiet because then likely what they're going to do is start focusing on that fear again and build that panic again. Okay. So you're constantly building them, constantly reassuring them. And then again, when they get to school, you've got other adults there to help obviously calm them down, but inform school as well that that's what's happening. That's why they're panicking. And, tell school that this is what you're doing all right and then they can support as well so that's a whole package for things. your child tell, tell school that you don't want them to collude with them yes yeah you know the easy the easiest thing would be to let them not be in that class you don't want yep. that again mm-hmm. anytime they're escaping in inverted mm-hmm. commas they're making it harder yeah um uh, and just one thing to clarify when you when you say uh, um calming them reassuring them yeah Remember, we talked about this before. We're not talking about re- reassuring them by telling them it's not going to happen. No. Because no. they're not gaining anything by that. We, we used the metaphor, didn't we, the other week of telling your child in the middle of the night they can't sleep when, when they're worried that the bogeyman's going to get them. You might say, oh, come and sleep with us. Look, the bogeyman can't get you in here. Yep. On the one hand, you're calming them down. But on the other hand, you're telling them the threat is real. There is a bogeyman. Yes. So when you're calming your child down, you're saying... You'll be absolutely fine. It's not going to happen. But even if it did happen, yes. you would cope. You yes. would tolerate it. It would be fine. It mm-hmm. would be absolutely fine. You would manage. It would be okay. Yeah. You're not just saying, don't worry, it won't happen. Yes. Because that's not helping build a skill set. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And then the, the five minutes later, they start to panic again. They've forgotten what you said. It's yes. got to be about everything you do and everything you say is about helping them build a skill set and have belief in their skill set. Yes. yes. I can do this. I can manage my emotions. I can yeah. I can get through this difficult situation. Right. And I think another thing to clarify from what I've just said as well, when I said it, let school in on it, let them know you're not wanting them to leave the class. But again, you're not saying don't let them leave the class when they're panicking. You want the school want to go through the same process that you're doing at home. If they do get themselves into a panic, they need to be able to calm down, calm themselves down, then pray. So talking them through all of this that you're doing at home, that's what I want you to do with them at school. But they're not to, they they can go out, they can have a glass of water, they can walk around, they can do all of that, but they've got to go back. That's perfect. That's exactly exactly what I'm doing. Let's have a glass of water, have a walk around, get, get back in there in 10 minutes and we'll just carry on. Fine. Yeah, which is perfect, which will help no end because then the, the child is having a consistent message all the way through the yeah. day then and being supported all the way through the day um, and not being allowed to avoid everything that they're finding scary, which again, isn't building the skill set. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Lovely. Lovely. That's probably well, it. That's, it. it. I think that's probably, it. I think the last thing I would say is when they get home at the end of that day is get them to process it, process it, process it, process it. What did you do? How did you get through it? What does that mean about you? 
All right. So don't just forget about it, forget it never happened. Process it. Bring it up in a really positive way. Praise them. I'm not saying reward them. You don't need to go, right, well done. You know, if you do this today, you will go to Mackey's for tea. That doesn't need to happen. But you do need to praise them in terms of you manage that. You did it. How did you do it? What did you do? And get them to understand what they did. Do emetophobes go to Mackey's for tea? <laughs> do you know what? Some do. Do they? <laughs> What did I you didn't. What did you eat? I, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. But some do. Some see it as a safe food. Fast food, safe food. Some, some. I didn't, but some do. Wow. I know. You are me there. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> I will see you in a week or so. Lovely. All right. Nice to Have see a you, Rob. Weekend, Michelle. Cheerio. You too. Take care. Bye. Bye.